Okay, um, hello everyone. Okay, so the next program in chapter seven is driver's license exam. All right, so the local driver's license office has asked you to write a program that grades the written portion of the driver's license exam. The exam has 20 multiple choice questions. Here are the correct answers. So these are the correct answers. Correct answers, okay. Um, a student must correctly answer 15 of the 20 questions to pass the exam. Write a class named drive, driver exam that holds the correct the correct answers to the exam in an array field. The class should also have an array field that holds the student's answers. The class should have the following methods. So these are the methods passed, which is going to return true if the student passed the exam or false if the student failed. Total correct is going to return the total number of correctly um, answered questions. Total incorrect is the opposite of total correct and it's going to return the total number of incorrectly answered questions. Questions missed, it's going to be it basically, it didn't really say, but it's, it's, it's it, it only says an int array containing the question numbers of the questions that the student missed. I'm guessing it's, it's, it should return an array, an int array containing the question numbers of the questions that the student missed. So demonstrate the class in a complete program that asks the user to enter student's answers. And then displays the results returned from the driver, driver exam classes methods, these methods. Input validation, only accept the letters A, B, C, or D as answers. <clears throat> okay, so we are going to be creating a class and we're going to be creating a program that's going to test the class. And so we're going to have two files. One is going to have the class and one is going to have the program that's going to test the class. I'm going to use this file as the class itself, okay, as a, as a file that's going to store the class. And then the next file is going to be the program that's going to test the class. So let's let's start. Now it says, um, let's see, over here. Write a class named driver exam that holds the correct answers to the exam in an array field. Right? So we know we're going to write a class named driver exam. So I'm going to define a public class and I'm going to call it driver exam. And then I'm going to go ahead and define the field. It says, write a class named driver exam that holds the correct answers to the exam in an array field, right? So we, we have the correct answers here. And so we can, it says we should, def we should define it in a field, in, in, in an array field over here. Um, okay, and so, and so we know that actually these are characters, right? We know they are characters. And so you would, it will make sense for actually for us to actually define them in character, or de define a character array, right? But let's define a string array, okay? It, it will work. The reason why I want us to define a string array is because if we use, if we define a character array, we haven't gotten to you know, the chapter where we can basically create character object and then use character methods and all that. Uh, because with, with a program like this, we would need some methods to, you know, for example, with characters we can compare, but then it's going to be a bit tough um, comparing cases, all right, C comparing to see the answers, like, you know, that the comparing cases with the answers, the user's answers and the correct answers to see if, you know, that, let's just stick with a string for now because that's what we, we know now. And as, as, we, as, we, as we move forward to future chapters, we would incorporate um, character arrays if, if need be. But for now, let's just create a string array of these answers, right? And so I'm going to create a, a private string array private because I don't want this field to be available to code outside of this class I don't want any code that is different from this class to be able to access it directly I want them to be able to I want I want any code outside of this class to be able to use other means let's say public methods or you know other means to be able to access this method or you know set or change this uh, sorry to be able to access this field or changes field, and that's why I'm I'm def I'm defining it as private. I'm trying to hide this field from any code that's different from this class. All right, so I'm defining a private string array, and I'm going to call it correct answers. Now we've been given the correct answers here, so I'm going to create an an um I'm going to basically initialize it. So I'm going to create an you know uh, a list of of you know I initialized values, right? And so I'm going to surround them in curly braces, and I'm going to basically I'm going to find a way to <laughs> basically copy all this in there. Uh, is it going to allow me like that? Let's see. 
uh, you know it has numbers in there so it's going to be a bit tricky let, let me just go ahead and type it so it's going to be a string array right so I'm going to basically create each of these answers in there as strings so it's this is going to take a bit of time but um, BD um, you know what let's do this let me just do this after let's see let's do that hold on copy that and then paste oops I forgot the comma okay this is better all right and so I'll just change the values later on how many do I have now the good thing about arrays when you're creating a, a list like this when you're creating an initialization list like this you can break them on two lines you can break them where the comma is so I can break them so around here on two lines and it'll still work. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Alright, so now let me change it to the answers itself. So BDACC, sorry, BDAAC. I don't know what's wrong with my eyes. <laughs> ABACD, A, B. Okay, and then B C B C D A D B C dad. <laughs> okay, and then C C B D A. Okay, so now we have our string array, our private string array of correct answers, and these are the answers given to us. Okay, we've in initial we've cre we've created an initialization list um, in the array as a field. Okay, and so what's the next thing? The next thing is the class should also have an array field that holds the student's answers, right? And so let's do that. Let's also create another field that's going to hold the student's answers. It's going to be very similar to this. The only thing is we don't have the student's answers yet. So let's define that array, or let's define a reference variable that's going to reference. Um, a string array of the stu of the student's answers. So it's just going to be a, sim um, a similar array, a private string array. Let's call it student answers. But then let's not initialize it yet. Let's just create a variable which is going to store in the future um, an array of, of, of a string array of the student's answers. <coughs> so now we are done with the field. Now there's one more thing that I want to do, although the question didn't say it. I want to basically store the number of questions. We have the answers here, and so that based on the answers, we, we, we can tell the number of questions. But I want us to store it in a variable so we can use it in the future, uh, if need be. And so I'm going to create a private um, int variable, and I'm going to call it number of questions. Now, number of questions, I'm going to set it equal to. Now, every array has a public field, okay, a public field called length. It's a public field called length, so you can directly access it, right? So I'm going to access the, the public field called length of this array. So um, it's basically going to be correct answers.length. And basically, by, by typing this, I, I, I can get the length of this correct answers and then storage a number of questions with S here. I'm just storing this so that in the future we can use it. Let me just close this and close that. Okay, so let's move on. Now it says the class should have the following method passed, right? So returns true if the student student passed the exam or false if the student failed. Now over here I can see that it also has a method called total correct. Um returns a total number of correctly answered answered questions. Okay, so if you think about it for a second there, so it turns true if the student passed the exam or for okay. Now for us to be able to determine if a student passed, we need to know how many questions the student got correct, right? Return the total. Because this one returns the number the total number of um, correctly answered questions. And I think that the question said over here that um where is it? The exam has twenty four multiple choice questions. And a student must correctly answer 15 of the total questions. Now, total correct, I know, will basically give us the number of questions. After we've written the code, it will, give, it will return or give us the number of questions the student got correctly. 
And so based on that number, we can determine if the student passed or not. And so let's create this total correct method first before this passed method, right? That's 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 what I'm thinking because we're going to use it for for the pass. We're going to use it. We're going to need the total correct method before pass. Um, that's that's the first thing that came to mind. So let's let's create total correct. Right now, total correct is going to be an instance method, right? And an, inst an instance method is basically any method that is going to directly work on the fields of an object created from this class. And so, because this total correct method is going to use to directly use or work on these fields, it becomes an instance method. And instance methods don't have the keyword static, right? Well, normally, when you're declaring, uh, you're creating methods, you say public static void or public static int. Instance methods don't have the keyword static, and so you just type the uh, the access. Uh, you just specify the access, right? And then you basically you know everything works the same as a regular method you specify the return type give it a name and so on and so forth. but it doesn't have the keyword static and so I'm going to create a public because I a public uh, method because I want um, code outside of this class to be able to use this method call this method and, and you know use it right so I'm making it public to code outside of this class unlike these private fields All right so public um, now I need to specify the return type let's see total correct um, it's, it, it tells us over here returns the total number of correctly answered questions and so it's it's going to be a number it's it's going to be a number of correctly answered questions either 5 or 10 or 15 and so the return type is going to be an int an int here right and then i'm going to call it total correct that's what the, that's what the question said we should call it apart from that it looks just like a regular method apart from the fact that apart from the fact that it doesn't have um, the static keyword all right, so total correct. Let's see if it's going to accept any argument. Um, no, because uh, it's just going to work with the, uh, the the arrays here, right? It's going to work with that. So it's not going to really accept any argument. And so, how do we determine the, determine the total correct? We have to basically compare, right? We we'll compare each um, element in in each of these arrays. So we take the first element in this array, compare it with the first element in this array. If if they match if they are the same then we, we we create a variable to keep track of the number of times we found matches here right the number of times that you know e each of these elements match right because this actually represents question one question two and the student array will also have the same number of elements and the elements in there will match basically the you know basically the the questions right there will be answers to the to the 20 questions and so they'll match and, all right so <coughs> By the time we call this total correct method in main, right in our main program, st the student our answers our array will be filled. So we are writing this method, assuming or with the, with with, with um, in mind with um, <coughs> um, knowing that right this student array, <coughs> sorry, knowing that this student answers array will be filled. And so let's create a for loop that's going to basically go through these two arrays, right? And so I'm going to just create a, a for loop. I'm going to initialize index. Index is what we're going to use to refer to the slots or the elements or you know the slots or the elements in the in these arrays, right? We know that the first element in an array has the first element in an array, so this element in an array has an index of zero. Elements in an array are basically represented by in indices, right? And so the first element in an array has an index of zero. The sec the, the last element in an array has an index of one less than the length of the array. So the first element in the array has an index of zero. The second one has an index of one, two, and then this last element has an index of one less than the entire length of the array. And so this has twenty elements. The first element, which is element number one, has an index of zero. And so, because the in the, in the indices start from zero, right, the last element will always have an index one less than the length of the array. All right. And so that's what we are doing here. We are, we are basically going to use a variable called index. It's, it's going to be an integer. We are going to initialize it, initialize it to zero. We are making sure that index is less than the length of the array. Remember, we said that each array has a public field called length. And so we can refer to it correct. Let's use correct answers dot length. And so I'll explain this in a second. All right, so we are initializing index to zero. Index is what we are going to used to refer to basically these the element right because they all have an, an indices 
we are making sure that the index is the index okay the value in index it's a it's a valid index meaning it's a it's it's an it's a number or it's an index that we can use to refer to to an element in, in this array or in the students array they, they both have the same number of elements all we're doing here is just making sure index is within the range of 0 to in this case 19 we are making sure that it's less than because if this is 20 right we're making sure that the index is from anywhere from 0 to 19 right because those will be valid indices this first element has an index of 0 and the last will have an index of 19 okay the last element will always have an index of 1 less than the length of the array so that's what we're doing here set index to 0 we're making sure as long as index is less than the correct ancestor length they are both of the, they are both of the same length actually we shouldn't do that we shouldn't do that since we've um, stored n the number of questions in here we can actually use the number of questions so it doesn't seem confusing over here because it's the same thing Co correct answers the length is 20 student answers the length is 20 when you think about it we are really dealing with the number of questions right which I've set to cor correct answers dot length so let's use that and it reads better too it reads be better and so oops number of questions and so we set index to zero as long as index is less than the number of questions which is basically the elements the number of elements in each of these arrays let's basically let's do what's in the loop and before we come back up to check to see if index is less than number of questions right let's add one to index let's add one to index because otherwise index will always stay zero and so we said so basically what's happening is we set index to zero and we check to make sure if index is valid we we do whatever we want to do in the loop and then before we come back up to check to see if index is less than number of num the number of questions again we increase index to one and index becomes one and we check to see if one is less than the number of questions we're checking to make sure that we always increase an index index after um ad after each iteration but we're also checking to make sure it's a valid index right and so basically this structure will allow you to go through any of these arrays at any time okay as long as they you know yeah basically any of these arrays at any time because they have 20 elements each and we have that stored in number of questions and that's what we are using to basically um, set the upper limit right for the 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 array when we when we are iterating iterating through it <laughs> all right I just I just wanted this to be clear and so that's why I'm talking like that <laughs> All right, so as we're going through these arrays, now we have the indexes, so the indices to go through them, right? So as we're going through them, we are just checking to see if at any time the first element here matches. So we are making sure that the elements at, at, at any time, so the very first time we actually through this loop, again, student answers will be, will be filled for us, right? And so we are checking to see if the first element matches the, the first element of student answers. And then we are checking to see if the second, the second element in correct answers matches the second element in student answers. We are basically, basically keeping track of how many matches we have. And so let's create a variable. It's going to be an integer, right? It's going to keep track of the correct, uh, correct answers. Let's call it correct answers. Um, yeah, let's call it correct answers. Let's initialize it to zero because before we start, the person start uh, the test, they have zero correct answers, right? And so at any time while we are going through the arrays, we are checking to see if, if at any time, right? Because we are dealing with strings here, remember we can just use equal to, double equals to, to compare strings because they are actually objects and so we can use methods we can apply methods on those objects to to compare them right and so we're going to use methods to compare them right because they are object we can't just use equal to because if we use equal to we're actually comparing their memory location and that's not what we want okay so if at any time correct answers index right if at any time correct and it and uh, answers index right which would which would basically select an element in in the correct answers array based on the index and i'm going to use the method dot equals ignore case if at any time an element in this correct answers dot equals ignore case <clears throat>
uh, ignore case and then what are we comparing comparing with we are comparing with the same the, an, an, an element in the same index okay an element in the same index of student answers that's what we are comparing with right and so if at any time an element in the in the correct answers array is equal to right an element in the student answers array based on the index right in the same index i also i forgot to add, add that right we, we are checking to make sure that an element in the so for example if we are dealing with let's say the first element we're checking to see if the element in index assuming index is zero we are checking to see if this element is equal to the element at index zero two of student answers and then if index gets increased to let's say one by one to let's say um, let's say one then now we're checking this element which has an index of one okay we are comparing it with the elements in student answers at index one also right that's what we're doing now the reason why i had equals ignore case is if the student for example you know for example is typing the answers and types in a lowercase b right let's say we are comparing this b to make sure that assuming they you know in that same index the, the student has b2 um, but a lowercase b i'm saying ignore the case ignore the case just compare the uppercase b and the lowercase b if they are the same then do something here. If they're not, then do something. All right. So that that's basically what, what I'm what I'm saying. Ignore the case as long as they have B. Make sure it, it's a match. Okay. Return. Uh, make sure this whole thing results to true. As long as even if even if one is a lowercase b, one's an uppercase b. Make sure that it, you return true. That's all I'm saying. Ignore ignore the case. And so if that's the case, then let's increase correct answers. Right by one. So correct answers. Okay, correct answers is going to be equal to what's already stored in correct answers plus one. Okay, so if correct answers is zero, then it's going to be zero plus one, which gives you one, and we're storing one in correct answers. And at the end of the day, when this loop is done, we'll have the number of correct answers. If there was, if there's no match, then correct answers will stay at zero. But if there's a match, then we'll, correct answers will be, will be, we'll, we'll keep track of it here. And then when we are done outside the loop, we return correct answers correct answers here because we said we we're going to return an enter return correct answers all right so now we are done with this method now let's move back to the past method right it's also going to be so let's just let's see um, right after that it's also going to be actually it doesn't matter where you put it I'm going to put it above or I just put it below. It doesn't matter. All right. So let's create the past method. It's also going to be an instance method. So public. No static keyword. I'm sorry. Public. Now we have to specify the return type. <coughs> let's specify the return type, which is um, so pass. It returns true if the student pa uh, passed the exam, or false if the student failed. And so true or false, right? That means it's going to return a boolean. And so let's set the return type to be a boolean. So public boolean right and let's call it past and past let's see if it's going to accept any arguments no it's only going to return true if the student passed the exam or false now how do we know if the student passed if the total correct answers right is greater than or equal to 15 because the question said over here that a student must correctly answer 15 of the total questions to pass the exam and so we have the method here total correct which returns the, the correct answers, the total number of correct answers, right? And so let's create in this method an if statement and say that if at any time, oh, not, not at any time, that's just a regular if. So if total correct, which we have here, which is a method we're calling it, is greater than, actually, let's also do this. We, in, in this method, let's create a variable that's going to store the, let's say, the passing score. The passing score is 15 and above, right? So 15. Um, and above right basically let's say 15 and so let's create a variable it's going to be an integer because it's, it's 15 you know it's, it's an integer so pass int passing score let's call it passing score let's set it equal to 15 all right and so if total correct is greater than the passing score 
factory greater than or equal to the Parson score because if you get 15 to you pass and so if total correct is greater than or equal to Parson score then let's return true because that's what the question said we should do now it's possible that it's possible that right this wouldn't be the case but it's possible that the total correct wouldn't be greater than or equal to um, pass and score. In that case, return true. In that case, this statement wouldn't be hit or wouldn't wouldn't run, right? This if statement wouldn't be true, so it wouldn't run. And so, in the case where this statement that this if statement doesn't run, that means that the total correct answers weren't greater than or equal to the pass and score. And so, let's make sure that if it doesn't run, then we return false. We return false to indicate that the total correct answers weren't or basically they weren't greater than or it wasn't greater than pass and score. You can also create an if-else statement, right? Um, yeah, you can also do that. But if this statement doesn't, uh, if this if statement doesn't run, that means that the total correct answers weren't greater than the passing score. So in that case, then return false. And so we're done with this this pass method too.